Before this tutorial begins, at the very top of the description, you'll find three links. Download these three plugins onto Roblox Studio and you can get them. It's pretty easy and simple and they're free. So Waterfall Generator, Part of Terrain, and Build V4 Staging. To get them, all you gotta do is click Install on them. It'll open Roblox Studio and you'll install them. Then you open a new place file once you've installed all three and they'll be there in your plugins folder. Let's get started. All right, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to use Roblox Smooth Terrain. I know it's been a long time since the last tutorial, but I think over time I'll be able to do more as I get more ideas. But if you want me to teach you how to do anything that involves building, comment them down below. If it's scripting, I am not your guy. Don't even try to ask for me to teach you how to script. But let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. Remember to comment down below any ideas for learning how to do things in Roblox Studio in regards to building. Put it in the comment section. All right, so Smooth Terrain. If you don't know what it is, let me show you the differences between the two things. So Smooth Terrain, it's different from Roblox part, quote unquote, terrain. So this is like smooth, this is part terrain right here, right? So let's say I did this and then I just put this above right here. So let's just, let's just do this right there. And then I made this my grass right here and grass material, grass material right there. And then I made this like my dirt. And then this is like a brown shade or something like that. So this is like what you see a lot of people do on Roblox with like part terrain. That's okay. But I'm going to be teaching you how to do smooth terrain, which is brand new to Roblox for the past few years, I believe. And it's something that's really changed over time. Like Roblox had an old terrain. I wouldn't necessarily call it smooth terrain. I would call it like normal Roblox terrain. And then they evolved it to be more smooth and be a lot more precise in my opinion. So let's go ahead and delete this. I'm going to go ahead and change my movement to one just to make that easier. So to open this little terrain editor, all you have to do is go to the home tab and click editor up here. Or you can go to view and click the terrain editor on this part right here. So terrain editor, basically it says right here what it, what it does basically add, remove and modify terrain, which is in base. That's basically what it does. Now there's a bunch of different tools. There's two, four, six, eight, nine tools to use. The generate tool is kind of like generating biomes. I'm not really going to teach you how to do that because that's, that, that's not really what many people do. Many people actually custom make their things and then import. This is a feature, I don't know if everybody has access to this, but this is a feature where you use an image and it bases it off the image. Now I'm going to teach you how to use add, subtract, paint, grow, erode, smooth, and maybe regions as well. So let's go ahead and start with add. So when it comes to add, there's different things on the left. There are size, which is how big your paintbrush is, or I'm going to call it a paintbrush, but your brush, and then strength. Strength, you may not understand completely, but it's kind of like how, how much you put in in one click. Now it doesn't matter how much strength I really use because either way it's going to be the exact same, but strength mainly applies to things like, you know, I would say grow, erode, and maybe smooth sometimes as well. So let's go ahead and maybe just put strength halfway. There's really no difference in this halfway. So there's different shapes as well. There's the circle shape or the sphere shape I mean, and then there is the cube shape. So these different shapes, as you can see, up top, they don't really look that different, but once you start seeing them from the sides, you can tell how different they are. They're pretty different. Now, if you guys haven't already seen my other tutorials, top right corner, click the eye, you'll be able to see the other tutorials. That's where you learn other basics of Roblox Studio, but I'm not gonna be teaching that in this video. So then auto right here, auto is kind of like auto paint, and I'll show you what that is in a little bit. Let me go ahead and do this. I'm gonna make different materials. I'll show you what each of the different materials are in a second. But for now, we're going to go ahead and make the different materials. And then if I click auto, notice what happens when I do this auto kind of like automatically paints in between them right here. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty simple. There really isn't much to auto. All it does is connect the two without you having to custom paint them while adding them into your map, which is pretty simple to be honest. Now, after I disable auto, there's a bunch of different materials. You can play around with it to learn it, but I'll teach you them in a minute in a minute. The plane lock is kind of like keeping it on an axis, like the X, Y, and Z, like X, then like Z, I believe. And then uh, this is Y right here, something like that. That's how it is in Blender, I believe. But in Roblox, Z, Z is this. I think X is this, and then Y is up and down. So yeah, there's differences between them. Snap to grid is kind of like increment. So if I were to like click this, notice how it looks kind of like clunky. It's kind of like, like, you know, it kind of looks like a conveyor belt. That's what Snap to Grid does. Ignore water is basically if I were to add water right here 
and now to click ignore water it basically ignores the water but if i were to not click ignore water notice how it goes around the water no matter how much i go through it that's basically what it does ignore water is useful when you're making a map with water of course so be mindful of that now subtract is the exact opposite of add if i were to click add and now to do subtract it gets rid of it it's pretty simple you just got to be in control of the height of the terrain because i could be up here and it only gets rid of part of it but i could be down here and it gets rid of most of it you see what i mean but yeah be careful with what you use for those now what i mainly do is i'm going to recommend three plugins in this tutorial by the way but i'm going to show you the basics without the plugins first what i do is sometimes i use add or i use like uh part of terrain which is one of my plugins then i use paint and then for paint i mainly use the sphere because it's easier to do and then you can just do this real quick it's pretty simple and easy and then you can also do grow and grow it basically makes it go up that, that's basically what it is for grow though for grow a road we got to be careful though because if you were to hold shift and your scroll your mouse scroll wheel notice how it changes in size if you're to hold control it changes in strength so if i were to put max strength and i would just hold notice how tall it grows so fast if i were to put my strength all the way down and just hold it goes much slower that's what strength is for now if I were to increase size with shift while also increasing strength, notice how it rises up. And then let's say I were to decrease both while it rises and notice how it kind of reaches a center point between it. So if you want to be smart with smooth terrain, basically do this, put your strength at max, I would say. You can make a lot of like cavernous things, like a cave thing, like stalagmites and stalactites. Let's say I hold and then I decrease the size of my brush as it goes up. Notice how it kind of reaches the point. That's basically what you can do by holding shift and control. So play around with that on your own time. It'll be easier to learn if you play around with it on your own. Now erode is the exact opposite as grow. It basically erodes. It's really simple and it makes it kind of like go down a little bit like a bevel. And then smooth is basically smoothing parts of it to, you know, I guess look better. There really isn't much to smooth. I use smooth quite a bit, but I only use smooth when it's useful. I only use smooth when like I feel like something doesn't look good and I need to connect things like sometimes in smooth terrain things are disconnected like it looks kind of weird right here so what I do is I use smooth and it connects it really well to make it look better as you can see right there and it looks pretty good but yeah that's smooth right there and then regions is very useful if you've made a mistake and you need to correct it so let's say I select regions real quick and then the select tool selected it's kind of like building tools by f3x or build v4 all you gotta do is drag, click and drag, and you can do this, and then you select move, and you can move that out of its area. You see what I mean? Control Z. Then if I were to do it again, I can select this area right here, and then resize, I can resize it, extend it, and so on, and it connects it still. And then rotate, of course, is rotate. I think it, I think it follows a 90 degree rotation regardless of what you do. And then copy, basically after you select it, you can copy pieces of it right there. And then I believe you can just paste real quick and then you can drag the pasted piece right there. I recommend just doing that and then you can also resize it and so on. It's pretty, pretty, pretty useful and simple. Boom, boom, boom. And then if I were to select something right here and I were to click delete, it of course deletes it. If I were to select this real quick right here and click fill, I can fill it with whatever material I want and press OK. Bam. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. But that is the basic tutorial for Smooth Train. Now let's move on to the plugins and why I use them. So if I were to go into my plugins, the plugins you need to download are Part of Terrain right here. I also recommend downloading Build V4. And I also recommend getting Generate Waterfall. Waterfall is pretty simple. I'm only going to teach you the basics of Waterfall because it can get pretty complex and I really don't want to make it complex for this tutorial. This is a beginner's tutorial, by the way. So let me go ahead and just make my, you know, waterfall piece. Just go ahead and do this. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so we started off a little waterfall. Let's go ahead and paint our water right there. This is really basic, and I'm also going to give you a homework assignment at the end of this tutorial. Just keep that in mind. So if I were to select my waterfall plugin, click and drag down. Notice how I have a little waterfall. I'm not holding the, the click anymore. It automatically uh, locks onto it. Let's go ahead and click and lock it there. But keep in mind, you can't edit it until after or till during your placement of it so you got to be careful so i'm going to go and delete my waterfall i'm going to click right here and i'm going to edit my upper width and i'm going to edit my lower width and notice how it's wider now so lower width is the part that's being dragged at the bottom upper width is this top piece right here now the speed is the speed of the particle or the beam as you can see it's much faster now if i load the speed right here it's really slow 
and if I were to put it back in the middle, it's pretty normal. Now transparency is how visible it is. Notice how it's almost completely invisible. And then notice how if I do this, it's almost completely visible. Softness is kind of like how soft the particle is. You'll see what I mean in a second, how it looks pretty rough right there, or full right there, and now it looks like you can see a bunch of the particle. It's pretty simple. There's also different styles like cartoon, which it pretty much looks cartoon as you can see by the bottom piece and the little conveyor belt looking thing. Subtle. Subtle is useful sometimes, not all the time though. I recommend turning up transparency for subtle and it can be useful, but you gotta edit subtle quite a bit to be able to look good. And then realistic is what it starts off with. And then you can use a custom one, I believe, if you click other. I normally don't do this. I just don't see the point right now. You can edit it after you place it. So let's go ahead and place our waterfall. And notice how if I were to just press control one it, or control two, three, four, it selects my tools and I deselect my plugin. It's pretty simple. Now, if I were to go ahead and add more terrain around this area, cause I need to do more editing. I'm gonna show you in a second. Let me go ahead and do this. Boom, boom, boom. We made a little area. Let's go ahead and paint it right here with the rock. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Now after that, let's go ahead and select build V4. And with build V4, what you do is you click on this one right here. It looks like smooth terrain terrain. And there's different options. There's the paint option for paint. You can select top surface, which is what you see up top or a side, which is what you see from the side. Now, if I just like top, I want my tops to be like ice, right? And I want my sides to be lava. And then I only want to replace, this is what like materials I want to replace. Like I could select rock or I could select grass. So only replaces the grass or only replaces the rock, but I'm not going to do that. Then radius. So if I were to click right here, notice how it does exactly what I want. Boom, 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 boom. Notice how the top is ice and the side is lava like I selected right here and here. Pretty simple, pretty useful. Papa John, no, I'm kidding. Uh, make sure you do that. Uh, that's all I want to say for build V4, I believe. But actually, no, there's one more thing. There's this grow and shrink mode. This is huge and very useful. So increase the radius as much as you want, which is this right here, which is how wide it is. Notice how like I made like a mountain type thing right here. And it basically operates off of what you've selected. I can make mountains everywhere I want in this smooth terrain map. It's pretty darn useful. Now, after I've done that, I can also do the feature. I usually don't mess with this too much, but there's three different modes. There's the like eggshell mode. I call this like the egg mode. There's like the ramp right here. And you'll see the difference as you use them. The ramp is like that. Egg kind of goes up really fast. And then there's like the beveled form, which is like really, really useful when you're making terrain maps. It basically makes the top flat and you can use the smooth tool to edit that and it's pretty good. That's pretty much it for that, I believe. There really isn't much else that I use. There's always like the bore and extrude. I really don't use this all that much. I don't really use this. This is basically grow and shrink. I really don't use this all that much. So I recommend just ignoring that. But those are the two main useful things for build V4. And then we have part to terrain. So let me go ahead and set up something for you for part of terrain. All right, so basically part to terrain does this. Let's say I select part to terrain. I can select air and it makes it invisible or basically deletes it if you want to say that. Now there's also different materials and smooth terrain. So I'm going to go ahead and create all the materials on this little part path I made. So I made my little part path. And as you can see, part to terrain turns your parts into smooth terrain. This is one of the most useful plugins I've ever used in Roblox Studio. So if you're going to get anything, I recommend this and build v4. Waterfall is only useful if you're going to make waterfalls. Now, when it comes to what to do next, this is like just showing you the material. So why am I showing you this? Well, the reason is, is because Roblox Smooth Terrain allows you to edit different materials. Now, if I were to go to my workspace right here on the right and then click under to terrain, there's a lot of different things I can do. And Roblox added a new feature that I'm going to show you right now, which is really, really cool. This is the decoration appearance. You just click it and bam. Notice how nothing else is affected, only this grass material, not even the grass that has leaves. Only the normal grass is affected. And notice how I have grass right there. <clears throat> Now the grass there also matches the color of our grass. So I can edit all my material colors to be different. So if I were to do this, I can click that. Then let's say I go over to my asphalt material. If I were to edit this, I can make it any color I want because I can edit all the colors. It's pretty useful. Let's go and just do this. I'm going to edit every single color to be different from what it used to be. I think it's going to be pretty cool. So you'll see exactly what I mean in a second.
All right, so I basically edited every single color but water because water is the most important in my opinion, other than grass. Those are the two most important ones. But notice how everything looks so completely different. If I would just do Control Z and hold it, everything looks so different. It looks very different from what it did before. But yeah, that's basically what you do to edit the colors. It's using color three values, which means you can do almost every single color in the world. And then for watercolor, let's go ahead and go down here to edit the water. So water is a lot more different than everything else because water has different speeds, reflectancy, and everything like that. So if I were to go over here and edit the watercolor, I can make it any color I want. Notice how I can make it orange. I'm gonna make it orange for now. I can make it reflect zero. I can make it reflect one. I think one is the max, I believe. And then I can make it as transparent as I want, which means how see-through it is. If I were to just go ahead and make it zero transparency, notice how I can't even see through it. 0.5 means it's barely visible through it, which is pretty cool. Now the water wave size is basically how up and down it moves. Notice how like it goes like that. If I were to increase the speed to 15, it goes a little bit faster. If I were to increase it to 35, it goes much faster. If I were to increase it or decrease the water wave size to 0.25, notice how it barely goes up. If I were to make it like 0.05, very rarely goes up. And then if I were to make this 100 right here, notice how it goes super fast, like jelly. It's pretty simple. That is basically smooth terrain. Now for your homework assignment, what I want you to do is basically do what I did here, but make it a lot better than this. Come on, make it better than this. Make sure you use the new grass feature where you click right here and click decoration and turn it on and everything like that. I want you to at least use water, the waterfall plugin and the grass material. You can use any other material you want, but those are the three things I require for this little homework assignment. Tweet me at roball01. That is my Twitter if you want to tweet me what you've done for the assignment. And also, if you guys want more in this series, comment down below your ideas. I'm really running out of ideas of what to teach you because I've pretty much taught you a lot of the basics. But if there are any like intermediate or advanced things you want me to teach you, I can move on to that for the next series. But I do know that particles and, and animations are going to be part of the intermediate series. They're not going to be the basics anymore because I basically showed you what they were, but I didn't really teach you how to use them completely. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on with that. That's the homework assignment. Remember to do that. Comment down below any ideas you have. Follow me on Twitter to message me or DM me. But you can also just tweet me on Twitter at Roball01 and show me what you've done. But yeah, till then, it's been your man Roball. I'm signing out now. See you all in the next tutorial. Take care, everybody.